Now, who can tell me who's been on the cloud? Who's been on the cloud journey? Raise of hands. Okay. Who has not yet started going on the cloud? Either cloud. Raise of hands. Okay, you either on or off. <laughs> <laughs> so let's try to avoid making our clouds angry. And I'm going to tell you the journey that we've been. And we have few of us has been on a cloud journey with me. James has been on a cloud journey with me. We've seen the pain from starting from zero to the very end. And I'm going to give you a distilled version of probably eight steps to consider around the cloud and what to do. Before we crack on, I want to leave you with a little bit of a trivia and see if you can identify what 42, what is the question that 42 answer in my logo? Exactly. Hi, Chuck, a guy to the galaxy. If you haven't read the book, please do. It's amazing. <laughs> so, as I said, we're going to introduce the context. We're going to talk a little bit about me. We're going to see how the cloud has evolved from the beginning of a data center land that is yet just another cloud, as VMware has, into the cloud that is yet another data center, all the way to function as a service and whatever reserve us the future. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about eight steps to consider when moving to the cloud from the beginning to the end. So a little bit about me. I'm the speaking head on a lot of events on the Cloud Security Alliance with Lee, Paul, and Lewis. I'm a CISO and a CISO advisor. I'm representing NSC42, and I'm here uh, helping HSBC building their security practice. I've been around the industry on quite a few times on different kinds of industry. We've been uh, insurance, UN, uh, pretty much banking. But I've seen over and over and over the same problem from a security perspective. It's hard. We need to know a little bit about everything. So when we were on the cloud, when we were on the data center land, it was fairly decent. We were private. It was fairly OK. But then when we moved to the cloud, we had to know, as David explained, a lot of stuff. The complexity is massive. And we get into a cloud, somebody else says, that's our service is fancy. Let's buy it. And another says, that's other SaaS service is fancy. Let me ask you a question. How do you stop that? How do you stop an adoption before you actually get into that? Shadow IT. Pardon up with your finance department. It says, whenever somebody's trying to buy something, just give a flag up. Get me involved. Very, very little tip. To, show, uh, to stop your shadow IT. Because we need to know a little bit about the cloud before you start. So you can plan for it. Security is challenging. Let's make it everybody's job. But that doesn't mean delegation. That does mean informing, educating, and taking people on a journey. So how things have changed, how things have evolved, and what is the impact on security? This is a little bit of a journey from data center land. In 2006, we said AWS, pushing service. Now, who has seen the very early version of AWS? Raise of hands. How many of you have seen the GUI of AWS at that days? Exactly. There was no GUI. It was complicated. It was a number of services clunked together that then evolved and evolved and evolved. Can anybody of you mention what the impact of a graphic user interface has on cloud provider from a user perspective? You are UX, UX whatever, whatever is easy to interact with. Exactly. Anybody can spin a VM. Anybody has the right can spin a VM, can spin something, and can potentially spin up a bucket that by default is open. They make it very easy to fuck up. Sorry for my French. <laughs> so after 2006, we had a lot of other people joining, joining the race, and so on, and so on, and so on. What happened from 2014? We had adoption. We had people 
and cloud provider pushing service and service and service. And I had to say, AWS is probably the one that is pushing most of the service without them being very, very ready or without being a lot of information. And the CSA is doing a lot to share this knowledge and the cloud provider is getting better and better in information. So we are in a much better position than we, we were at the very beginning. People are perceiving the threats of cloud, but we're still so far ahead because we, as an industry, we are struggling because we're few and we're getting fewer and fewer knowing what the cloud is. So we had to bring other people in the journey. Otherwise we're gonna struggle, otherwise we're gonna fail. If they're gonna start questioning and asking security questions to the cloud provider before they even purchase it, then we are in a much better place. So, what are the security challenge from a cloud perspective, or in general from a perspective? We have increased number of breaches, why? Because we're moving faster and faster and faster. What does that mean? We have an impact on cost. Can you figure out if somebody breached your AWS root account, what is the, probably the first thing they're gonna do? They're gonna hack your environment? Or maybe they're gonna do crypto mining and your bill racks up to a massive amount. So think outside the box. Think, how can I detect a breach from a building perspective? Teach your finance department to skim through the billing and detect when somebody is not right. We have a fast pace and fast change from both internally, our organization, and the cloud providers. And most important of all, we don't have collaboration between teams. We have teams going fast, deploying without involving security, and the other way around. How do we solve that? Making security everybody's responsibility. Or, as I'd like to say, working with team alongside security. So, just a little bit of history about the recent breaches. Just to leave it there. How many of you had an account on any of this? Regardless if it's the cloud or not. Good. If you're not, probably you haven't checked, have I been pawned? I've been breached 14 times. One of my accounts has been breached 14 times from any of this one. So that's why security is everybody's responsibility. Treat your customer data as if it was yours. One breach of your customer might be yours. And just to give a scale, a perspective on how big are those breaches. And this is just the reason, yes. We need to get better at that. How do we get better at that? Patching, doing the basic right, taking time to actually understand the technology and building a strong foundation. And we're gonna see some of these steps. And I hope you're gonna leave from the room with at least few steps to go back and have we considered this? Have we considered that? Yet. You're gonna see that a lot. <laughs> So, just to recap, why security is everybody's responsibility? Because we all get affected by it. And organization will go fast because they are challenged from the market to go faster. Otherwise, they go out of business. Maybe banks a little bit less. But as Daniel said, Monzo is a new kind of technology, kind of new bank. It's challenging traditional banks because they don't have legacy. They can just jump on the cloud and probably do this right and not bring on board all the legacy crap. Sorry for my French. <laughs> so, our solution. Eight step. When you step into the cloud, consider the responsibility matrix. What you're responsible and what your crowd is responsible. Foundation, when you start to build your cloud, Start building the foundation. Consider the patterns that are available from the CSA, 
over the web from the cloud provider to know how to build the stack right. Design security, embed security inside design, and doing security right. Shift left, who knows what shift left is? Who has heard the buzzword shift left? What does it mean? Brilliant. So bring security. Security is not a pen test at the end of, a, of, an, of an application. And when we touch DevOps and what rate of change means, that can get demystified. But generally speaking, don't have security at one point in time because your vulnerability appears over and over and over. And then security testing. Not as one point in time, but continuous security and continuous testing and make those stats available, those information available. People will be ashamed or terrified that their application get breached. If you publish that, it has a bunch of vulnerabilities, right? If a team knows that it's doing bad, it probably wouldn't like to be bad. So analytics statistic and publish it and make that element part of the virus organization budget. If you don't fix your vulnerability in 40 days, your bonus get affected. How many vulnerabilities we will have at that point? We will still have vulnerabilities, but probably much less. And then I have to mention DevSecOps, but I also want to add business and architecture to the DevSecOps because it's important. Bring your business inside your application, your DevOps teams, and bring security inside your DevOps teams, either as a person or as a knowledge, or both as a transition. So, cloud responsibility. Understand when you step into the cloud what you are responsible for and what your cloud provider is responsible for. Who has done an analysis when buying a cloud, any cloud offering, on what are my responsibilities and what are my cloud responsibility? Okay, fair good amount. Backup, question for who has done that analysis. Whose responsibility is backup from a cloud provider perspective? Ah, yes. Okay. To do it. So if a cloud provider goes down, exactly. So are all those little things to consider? So even if your cloud provider is responsible for doing something, still consider a multi-cloud agenda or a multi-cloud strategy because your cloud provider might be down, your cloud provider might not be available, and is your brand that gets impacted. You get credit for it. Or that. Or that. <clears throat> but let's think about probably Google Docs, four hours unavailability, regardless of the region. That things to consider. And we learn in those lessons. The more and more we move into the cloud, the more and more we have those incidents, and hopefully not that many, we will learn those lessons. Who like pizza? <laughs> so just to explain a little bit about what are the service, you can do your pizza at home, on premise. Or maybe you like to delegate, and you buy your pizza. And you're still responsible to bring it home, to buy, to bring it home, to bake it, and to eat it. Or then you get it delivered. And the more and more you delegate the building, the raw material, the more and more the cloud provider is responsible for some stuff. Now, going back to the cloud and to the data and, and the stuff that we have on a daily basis, what is your ultimate responsibility as an organization? What are you going to help regardless? So let's shift function as a service. The more extreme right that we can shift. We delegate most of it. We're just running some 
code and some data. What is your organization responsibility from a security perspective? Application and data. Ultimately, that's an access control, if you want. Ultimately, that's what you need to look at. But consider what you're responsible at the various stage, regardless of what cloud provider you're jumping in, and then analyze the contract. How you build a solid house? You don't skip on the foundation. How you build a solid cloud? You don't skip on the foundation. <laughs> So how do you build a solid foundation? The cloud provider with the well-architected framework from AWS, Azure has provided the scaffolding and the element to consider, give us already this material. So consider all these element, start baking them in, choose a reference framework from a security perspective, start doing consideration around each of the areas. Even if it's, I ignore it, I'll do it later, at least you have a plan, and then break down each of these areas inside actionable element and build a roadmap. With this, you have a roadmap to a solid foundation. And then as Daniel said, consider your application stack, consider what you have in-house, consider the functionality when you move an application to the cloud, don't just lift and shift it. Consider if you actually need all those functionality. There is no point of security and functionality if nobody uses it, right? So moving into the cloud is also a chance to do economy on the functionality of an application. Rethink your application from scratch. And it's hard, it's hard to sell, but it's cheaper. You need to invest less in security. There is no such a thing as free lunch as, outside from HSBC offering us a free lunch today. <laughs> but consider the cloud patents. We're doing a lot of work on cloud patents and we're gonna publish a lot, of, a lot of the research work that we're doing. And the global chapters and the CSA are doing a lot of effort in actually saying how to do a lot of this stuff. But go around, search for this stuff, how other people have done it. How do you isolate account? How do you implement control? Traditional control, firewalls. A lot of organizations will still need firewalls. Paul would disagree with me. <laughs> or how, you use implement, um, how do you use native controls? What the advantage and disadvantage are? What are the patterns to utilize them? You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Those research are out there. So reuse their material. Step number four, how you design security. How do you, you have a, we have a stretch team in security, and that's a fact. So how do you expand the team without hiring more people? Anybody has a clue? Magic trick? Create a nice security hat, give it to people, jokes aside, take them on a journey. Even the basic stuff, even people that are responsible for infrastructure, patching, make them visible so that they can patch consistently. Basic, do the basic right. Review, rebuild of machines and stuff like that. Very, very basic thing that everybody, if you segment and if you create a plan, everybody can actually do it. And you will be so way better off than a lot of organizations that we have. What is security by design? Who has done threat modeling? Who has seen people not in security doing threat modeling right? Maybe. It's complicated. And we're making it even more complicated. And by that end, from my personal experience, and I, you can disagree, I try to teach threat modeling, and I try to bring people on the journey of threat modeling, and they try to escape from the room. <laughs> the second time I bring them in, I had to drag them in. And I don't want that. I, I want them to do threat modeling by themselves and drag me in and say, look how cool. 
This one is. How do you do that? Not creating complicated diagram that where they will be so far off their design and their application that they will not think even about the basic. Making it fun. Use what's heard escalation of privileged card game here. No one. Very simple card with threads that you throw your application, 50 minutes increment, the team can do themselves and they have fun doing it. You give a score and a point and who score more point, maybe you give it a gift. Free lunch, a coffee, anything. They'll do it themselves because it's easy, it's frictionless and it will scale because it will not be you drugging people doing thread modeling, but they will do thread modeling alone. Is it perfect? Not. Covers all your application? Probably yes. So you've done more security than by dragging your critical security application or your critical application to threat model. Shift left. To security at the beginning of a chain. From a requirement perspective, from a design pattern. Do threat modeling, make it fun. And then move to the testing. The testing is continuous testing. It's not just pen testing. It's also trying to break your own thing. Make sure your team create threat, from the threat modeling actions. So use stories to actually test and break things. And then DevSecOps. Who is in a DevSecOps team? Who knows what DevSecOps means? What does SecOp mean? It's trying not to throw shit from one team to the other. It's owning their own stack. You are responsible for the security of your application, of your patching, of your machines, rebuilding, testing. The developer work together with the operation team to hand over an application and to continuously develop. And then do it one step forward. Bring your business inside it. An application owner that own the application and they continuously improve the application by integrating new features and working with the developer. And then train them about security so that they are responsible for their own destiny. Because security is everybody's responsibility. So, what does security in the future reserve us? What can we see in the future? We're gonna see a lot of technology. We're gonna see AI, we're gonna see blockchain, we're gonna see function as a service, we're gonna see serverless, we're gonna see whatever. Security is gonna be always the same, doing things right. Security is nothing else than doing things right. So keep on applying the basic fundamental things. Take your time, slow things down and understand the technology and bring people on the journey. So in conclusion, we've seen the evolution and the challenge. We've seen the ideal world and the eight step to probably go there or to be a little bit bad, better off. And we've seen a little bit about the future and what it reserves. I'd like to leave you with a message. Help us get in cloud better collaborate with us, even two hours a month is sufficient for us. Join, join the conversation, help Luis identify new research material, help us build a new pattern. What are your challenge? Help us get in cloud better again. Thank you everyone. Thank you Francesco, has anybody got any questions for Francesco? Here we go. Uh, your approach to security, do you see security more as a reactive or a proactive uh, approach? It depends by the team. It depends when you get involved. Uh, from my experience, normally you get in reactive security. So you are on the, on, the, on the back foot. You had to learn from that experience to actually engage the team so that they become proactive. 
so that they start learning on the journey. So if you identify a number of things, make sure, don't spoon feed them. Don't spoon feed them solution. Let them reach a solution so that slowly but surely they will develop their own capabilities. Patching, for example. Don't just say patch. Just show the vulnerabilities that their application stack has, publish them, publicly available, their team will patch very, very quickly. Or they're gonna fit their budget, or the senior stakeholder budget. With that, you get in a more proactive approach. But training, learning, bringing people on the journey, letting them understand what is the actual impact on security. If something goes wrong, even the basic stuff, Thanks. Any other question? Oh, Fantastic. Thank you very Francesco. So, uh, no, yeah, one more. Question. In general, um, large corporations are so huge that you can't really change it all the very simply. Some co corporations have a culture of uh, providing information only on a need to know basis, which means that you don't get told anything. How, do you go, how, what's, how would you try to change that to enable better? I'm very, <laughs> we've been on a journey, so we know what that means. But I lie if I say that I have an answer for that. I think from my perspective is working with a number of things, showing what good looks like, building the pocket of expertise and a pocket of what good looks like with team that perform and they show that we can do security at scale and we can move fast and then slowly but surely we create a movement inside the organization and that will drag people along but also socializing the success celebrating success so everybody will want to imitate that team thank you Thank you, Divya.